Good morning everyone. It is a gorgeous day here. It's the loveliest of days and I just thought to myself it's a lovely opportunity to get out and cycle over to the graveyards because we're only about 10 days away from Samhain, otherwise known today as Halloween. But Samhain is the old ancient traditional name of this festival at this time on the Wheel of the Year. In the Celtic calendar, Samhain is the new year, but it's also the time when we remember our ancestors, our grandparents and all of those who've gone before us. So it's not, um, it's not a scary time or a frightening time as Halloween celebrations would have us believe. It's actually a time of respect. It's a time of feasting and celebrating and it can be a really lovely time. So I'm gonna head off to the graveyards um, just to pay a little visit. As a historian, I do like to remember um, the times gone by and my ancestors and their lives. And this is an opportunity to think about how people would have lived and how people um, got through their lives with the various challenges that they faced. Our ancestors believed that the dead and departed didn't go too far away. They were just on the other side of the veil. So if you had unfinished business with somebody because they had passed over, um, the business could be resumed on, at Samhain. There's a kind of revolving door between this world and the next world and they can come and walk among us again. That was the belief system. We also would remember our ancestors to thank them for the, for the journey they made in their lives which led to us. So it is an important time of year and it is a chance to pay respect and to think of those lives that went before. Here we are in the old graveyard. We have two graveyards in Balakaneli. This is the old one. It's going back to famine times. And I've just found my grandparents' grave here. It's very difficult to walk because it's not maintained at all. So this is my paternal grandparents and my great grandmother in here. And um, I thought I'd bring them some flowers because my grandmother was a great gardener and she loved plants. And yet I doubt if she ever received a bunch of flowers in her life. So, and it certainly wouldn't have been the custom to put graves, uh, flowers on the grave when she died because times were very hard. So I'm just going to leave them here. We're approaching Samhain and it's traditionally a time when we think of our ancestors and we welcome them back. So in this run up to Samhain, we're, lots of people will go and tidy graves and spend time at the graves. It's usually more the 1st of November, but you know, it's a period of time. It's not just one day. That's why I've come now. Um, so this grave is very unkempt and untidy because we tend to go now to the new graveyard where my father and my uncles are buried. And, um, and we tend to go there. But every now and again, I just feel it's nice to check in with the two grandmothers here, the grandmother and the great-grandmother. And this is a fascinating graveyard because as I said, it's going back to at least famine times, which is over 150 years. And um, in, in the old days, people didn't have headstones. You would just put a rock on the grave to mark it. And that's what happened here in the 40s, um, in, the, in the 40s when my grandmother died. I don't know how people remembered where their own people were buried, but they did. They all, they all managed to find their graves. This cross was made by my brother when he was still a teenager, probably. Because, as I say, we didn't have markings. You would just put a rock at the head of the grave. I 
I was doing um, a survey of the graveyards a few years ago and I began to wonder, well, where are my great-grandmother's family buried? Because there's no headstones and, it, you know, it's impossible to find because there's no marker really. And I discovered that this graveyard was going back to at least the famine times. And in the late 19th century, the local people thought it was too full and they were campaigning to get another site for a new graveyard. And the landlord of the time refused to give another field that was adjacent. So the, the local council and the landlord had lots of correspondence over whether or not he would sell them a site or a field or he wouldn't. And in the end, the council decided to do a compulsory purchase. But that never happened either. And in the end, there's a new graveyard which is in the village of Balakaneli. It's much closer to the village than, than here. But even today, people are buried here. They will go into their ancestors' graves. You know, they'll dig them up and put new people in. Um, but everybody's embalmed nowadays, so I suppose it doesn't really matter. Oops, but the grass here is so long. There's so many brambles. It's really difficult to get through and you have to be very careful where you're stepping. You know, when you're looking at the gravestones as well, you can see that there were trends and fashions. There's lots of old Celtic crosses. Um, there's lots of graves with little crosses on the top. And then you get these um, much more modern slab, slab stones that you can see, 2002, as opposed to 1921 next to it. It's really interesting. It's, a, it's incredible really to think that even something like a, a gravestone has its fashions and trends. <laughs> and when you come across big rocks like this, I wonder, was that somebody's marker one time? But from so long ago that there's nothing left anymore and they've just, the rocks have just been thrown up. Another thing about the graveyards is when you look at the names and the older graves all have people called Sean, Patrick, John, Thomas, Martin, and all the women are called Annie or Anne or Bridget or Mary. And then as you move through the decades, more, I suppose, more modern, less cultural, culturally relevant names um, start to appear. It's interesting. It's such a beautiful, peaceful sight. It's lovely to be here on a summer's day when it's warm and still. But I'm going to head now to the other graveyard, the more modern graveyard, and you can see the difference then. And um, that is also a beautiful place to rest. So this is the new graveyard and look at the view, isn't it fantastic? Wouldn't you love it if this was your last resting place with a view like that? It's amazing. So 
even in here, even though it's a newer graveyard, it's maybe 70, 80 years old, um, we still have some unmarked graves here where maybe people didn't have the money for a gravestone or they had nobody to place a gravestone for them. So um, some of them we don't know who is underneath. But in the old days when you buried somebody, you always left um, pipe and tobacco on the grave just to help the person settle in and to keep all the other spirits happy and welcoming. And um, the thing about burials here in Connemara is that the neighbours will dig the grave and when the body is buried after the requiem mass, all the neighbours bury, they all put the soil back in again and they take turns. It's a really beautiful, heartwarming uh, method that the whole community is burying one of their own. So it's not just a family thing, it's not strangers who work for um, a funeral firm, it's the neighbours, it's the friends, it's the relatives. And the family don't do it, they just, they just wait at the grave. And it's beautiful, it really makes people feel loved and treasured and um, given a good send-off. It's a human thing, it's not manicured, it's not um, just a material thing. There's no airs and graces about it, there's no fancy stuff. It's just all the fellas shoveling in the clay to bury that person and it is beautiful to see. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, video about Irish burials and graveyards. I'm just going to go and head off and visit my dad and my uncles. I'll see you next week with some more Samhain customs and um, traditions. So have a great week between now and then and enjoy the full moon tonight and thanks for watching. <laughs>